So you've decided to DM for the first time. If you found your way to my channel, then you're really digging deep into the internet for help, and right now you're probably feeling excited, nervous, and a little overwhelmed. Well, I'm here to tell you to take a deep breath. Relax, you're going to be fine. In fact, you're going to be great. Being a dungeon master is the most rewarding experience you can have in D&D, and it's really not as difficult as it looks. And I'm going to share with you some advice on how to handle your first time as a DM. Now first off, let's talk about preparation. It's easy to overprepare as a DM, and it can be easy to get the impression from some DMs that they know every street of their cities, every name of every person in them, and the color of most people's socks. There's no way you can write down every single thing about every single person or place in your world, and if you do, you will more than likely lose yourself in your notes. On average, for every hour of playtime that a group goes through, a DM needs to spend about half that time preparing. So if you're expecting to play for 6 hours next Saturday, try to find 3 hours of free time during the week to plan. You're going to need a few things when you start, but what you're building is a frame, not a house. You're going to need to write down the names of the most important key figures in your adventure. You're going to need a plot or a goal of some sort, something that the players can aspire to. And you're going to need a setting or place for them to start in. Those DMs who seem to have memorized the entire world, usually they're just really good at improvising and coming up with names and descriptions on the fly. If you're not good at that, then write down a sheet of the names you can pick from as your players talk to random people, or use a name randomizer. There are several in the books, especially in Sanafars, and there are even some randomizers online that give descriptions of people and items. Always make sure that you have a way of taking notes when DMing, and write down the name of any character that you come up with on the fly. Also try to write down their race, gender, and one more distinct thing about them. This will make it a lot easier to call upon them later, should the player seek out your improvised NPC. This way, the next time your players seek out Elaine, the weapons merchant, you can drop in something along the lines as you cross the Iron Market, you easily spot Elaine's yellow beret through the crowd, and you make your way towards the Tiefling stand. And your players will remember the consistency of the description and think to themselves, Right, that Elaine, always wearing that terrible hat. It can be tempting to write down more, but it can be important to keep the flow going, so if you want to make more notes about them, then try to do so after the session. Your first couple of sessions will usually require more preparation than the later ones in the campaign. If you're using a pre-written adventure or setting, then try to read ahead a little to see where things are going, in case you want to drop in some foreshadowing, or if there are any NPC or plot points that are important for later in your adventure that you might want to make sure make it through the first session. If you're writing your own adventure and setting, then you're going to need to come up with the world that the players are in, and that will take some extra time and effort. Now when I say world, I don't mean you need to come up with the entire plan that they're on, what you need is just their surroundings. Exactly what that means can vary greatly. If you're starting in a village, you're going to need the name of that village, of course. If you're traveling through a forest, you will need to know what the forest is like and what the player's destination is. But you'll also need to decide on other places and, and people that are relevant to your players. If one of your players is a thief from a great city, then there needs to be a great city in your world, and you need to know how far away it is and how it fits in. If another of your players is a princess, well then you need a kingdom somewhere, and it needs a king and a queen. Luckily, when it comes to places and people that are important to your players' backstories, you can often lean heavily on them for help. Ask the thief how he experienced the city. Was it clean or dirty? Were the guards vigilant or corrupt? Was it a port city or was it built on a plain? You don't need a lot here to start off, unless your adventure is set in an area close to your players' homes, just enough to know how your NPCs react to someone from the big city, and what they would know of it. We talked a little earlier about how to improvise NPCs, but when I prepare an NPC for an adventure, I try to boil them down to three things. What does the NPC fear? What does the NPC need or want? And one quirk that the NPC has. If you know these three things, you can pretty much figure out how they will react in any situation, and their views on most subjects, and it also helps you a lot to find the voice of the NPC the next time the players talk to them. As an example, let's say your players just arrived at an inn run by Innkeeper Steve. Now Steve is afraid of the ghosts and the more outside the village, Steve needs to make enough money to relocate to the next town, and lastly Steve has a limp from when his foot was crushed in a wagon crash as a teen. We had only intended for players to stop by the inn to ask some questions before heading out to the dungeon during the night, but 
the players don't want to go until the morning. So now we have this unplanned situation where the players spend all evening with Steve, our lovely NPC. Luckily, we can use our three facts to flesh out their stay. The players order some food, but as we know, Steve has a limp, and he's the only NPC we made from the inn, so he does all the work. So we can assume that it takes extra time for them to get their orders as the poor innkeeper shuffles back and forth from the kitchen with plates of food and trays of drink. When the players decide to ask him about his injury, we have that covered, and we can spin a little tale from the short note that we have. We might decide that the food is of poor quality and the drink is watered down. After all, Steve wants to make it move away and is trying to increase his profits, making his customers happy is not necessarily his priority. As the evening progresses, night falls. Now we know that Steve is afraid of the more ghosts. Perhaps this would influence his behavior too, and so he goes about securing window shutters and barring the door as soon as night has fallen warning the players not to leave the inn after dark or risk suffering a terrible death. Each time the players approach Steve, we can look at the three notes that we made and determine how he would act. In my experience at least, the inn stay we just had with Steve was a lot more fun and brought the world much more to life than just saying, you pay five silvers for food and drink, and another five silvers for your rooms, and you leave the next morning. And it required very little extra preparation. And that's what we really want. We want to maximize the amount of playtime and fun we get out of as little preparation as possible. That being said, sometimes you will just want to skip over things such as travel and mundane tasks as shopping and in stays. If you have a lot of other exciting things to get to, and your players don't get any joy from playing out Minutia, then fast forward to the good parts. Maybe you have all of your adventure already planned out. You might know exactly where you want your players to go and what you want them to do. But maybe all you have is a piece of paper with the name of a town written down? The notes Innkeeper Steve, More Ghosts, and Adventure? Question mark? Coming up with exciting adventures on the fly can be hard, that's why there are so many pre-written adventures and campaigns out there. But I'm going to teach you one of the greatest tricks to being a DM. And it doesn't just work for coming up with adventures. It also works for magical items, people, heck, it works for anything. I'm talking about stealing. I want to encourage you to steal, but let me be specific here before I get into trouble. I want you to encourage you to steal ideas. If you have ever read about a cool storyline, person, item or place that you think would be great for your D&D adventure, then feel free to steal it and put it in there. All DMs steal or borrow ideas. There really should be a better word for it, but I can't think of one right now. And it's a perfectly fine thing to do, and it can be a great help to flesh out your world and fill it with believable places, plots and people. However, there are a few things you really should keep in mind. First, you should try to steal from sources that are not well known by your players. If you start describing how the players need to take a magic ring to the land of the orcs, but they have to avoid the evil shadow riders, well, it's going to pull your players out of the game, unless you, they for some reason have never heard of the Lord of Rings. I'm sure there are plenty of books and TV shows that you have read or seen that your players are not intimately familiar with, and they don't have to be fantasy works either. If you're a fanatical binge watcher of reality TV, you could steal the inter-character relationships from one of those shows and apply it to the nobles of your town. Or you could lift plot lines from classical literature. The plots of Charles Dickens and Jane Austen work just as well in D&D as they did in Victorian England. Secondly, try to make what you steal your own. If you got the idea for your adventure from a movie you like, you don't have to stick to the way it played out in its original form. Feel free to change it any way you want and keep the best parts. It's your story now, so let it play out the way you want. If you base a NPC on Gandalf and you think that he would look cooler with a pink mohawk, then pink mohawk Gandalf it is. Your players won't know where you got this stuff from, so change it any way you see fit. Stealing should help you fill out your world, not restrict you. And lastly, make it fit within your world. One of the most important things to try to nail down in a setting is consistency. You can easily lift a couple of NPCs from both Game of Thrones and The Simpsons, but these people now exist in the same world, and they need to feel like they've always been a part of the same world. When you're starting out, you might not have nailed down a tone for your world, but as you build it up, you're going to need to make sure that every new piece that you place fits the puzzle. You might need This might mean downplaying powers, changing appearances, or exaggerating behaviors. It, it really depends on how your world is designed, and what sort of a feel it has. As an example, one place I recently stole ideas from for some minor side quests and encounters for one of my games was Elder Scrolls Online. I decided to check back in on the game this winter, and I came across some quests that I thought would be 
perfect as a sidetrack on a journey through the Talenta Plains of Eberron. So I made some changes and wrote them down. I uh, find it useful to keep a pen and a pad nearby at most times to write any, down anything really that I come across that inspires me, that I might use someday. Now, MMOs and other video game RPGs can be a great source for short encounters or quests if you're having a tough time coming up with something, but again, try to avoid games all your players know by heart. Of course, then my Eberron campaign morphed and changed into an entirely charm based noir detective story, so there's really not going to be a room for those encounters anytime soon, which brings me to another point I want to make. Don't throw out anything. You can never be certain what your players are going to do, and this is especially going to be true when you're starting out as a DM. You might have spent hours writing a series of encounters in a haunted swamp on the road to Waterdeep, culminating in a fierce battle with a young black dragon and leading into a future plotline where the dragon's parent comes seeking revenge, but your players decide last minute to turn left and head to Tribor instead of Waterdeep, bypassing the swamp entirely. Now, there are a few things you can do none of which should be to force your players to go to Wardy. You couldn't throw the encounters at them anyway. After all, the players don't know what lies on the road ahead. They picked a different road, but that doesn't have to matter as long as they don't know that their choice didn't matter. Or you could just file away the whole dragon thing in your archive for a rainy day. The next time your players approach a swamp, you will have a ready-to-play series of swamp encounters after all, so that way the preparation isn't wasted and you can use it another day. I would like to wrap things up by touching quickly on a few more things you should know are okay to do as a DM. First, it's okay to like your players. There are a lot of random elements in the game of D&D, but sometimes the randomness gets in the way of the game. Sometimes the dice gets everyone in the party killed. You didn't realize how much damage that fireball was going to do, and you realize that the 28 damage will knock out the entire party and instantly vaporize the wizard. So. Maybe it was just 20 damage, and that's okay. The group can wake up in a dungeon together with their wizard intact. Or, your players killed an important NPC early on, but he's vital to the story, and you have no idea how to save him. Bring him back in the next scene, and when the players shout in surprise, But we killed Bob! Just smile and nod and tell them, Yeah, you sure did. It's important, however, not to go overboard with this kind of stuff. The players expect the DM to be impartial, but in truth, you serve the group. As long as everyone is having fun, it's okay. If the players don't mind dying from random attacks, then there's no need to fudge the dice. Don't lie to your players just to make sure that things go the way you want them to go, but to make sure that the group as a whole stays happy. And most important of all, never let your players know that you've deceived them. Rounding down some damage or letting a monster die when it was supposed to have a few HP left is fine, but if you constantly fudge the dice and change your mind, the players will catch on, and may lose trust in you as a DM. Second, it's okay not to know all the rules. There are a lot of rules in D&D, and a lot more rules for a DM to keep track of than what a player needs to know. And it's okay not to know them all. Sometimes you'll have to look things up. Sometimes you can rely on your player's knowledge. This is especially true when it comes to their characters. If you don't know how the paladin's might works, just ask the paladin to explain it to you. When you're unsure about a rule, or if a player calls you out on a rule, Make a ruling at the time, explain to them, okay guys, we're going to do it this way for now. Write it down, and then look it up after the game. That way the flow of the game isn't halted. No one knows every rule when they start out as a DM, and no one expects you to. The important thing is that people are having fun, and thus the story goes forward. Third, it's okay to take a break or to end early if you run out of material. Maybe you'd expected the players to spend a lot more time in the place than they did, or Maybe they went in a completely different direction than you expected, and now you have no idea what to do. Some DMs just wing it then and play by improvisation, but you don't have to. Just tell your players the truth, that you did not expect them to head to Tribal right now, and you would really like to read through the chapter again before they get there to make sure you do it justice. It's okay, sometimes it might be enough for you to take 10 or 15 minutes to look things up and on a wiki or read a couple of pages. Then the players can go for a walk or get some more snacks. But sometimes, you just might have to break for the night, and that's okay too. Your players will understand, and you can make it up to them next time when you're better prepared. Well, there's a lot more I would like to say, but I think this video is running a bit long as it is, so I think I will leave it off there for now by wishing you good luck on your first adventure as a Dungeon Master. There is nothing like it in this world. And as always, if you enjoyed my advice for new DMs, then please give this video a like. And if you subscribe, 
don't forget to click the bell icon to receive notifications whenever I upload new content. If you want to support this channel, then please share this video on social media or with friends, it really helps out a lot. And you can also follow me on Tumblr or Twitter or check out my DMs Guild page, links to all of that below. Until next time, Dungeon Delvers.